All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So, I uh, was just about to do a video on render times on a couple of different MacBook Pros here. And uh, I've got my MacBook Pro 2015 and my wife's MacBook Pro 2011, both of which are i5s. But my MacBook Pro 2015 is completely hosed. Um, so yeah, I can't click on anything or do anything. The keyboard's barely working and I don't know. I don't know what happened. I guess I'm gonna have to power it off in a second here. Um, but yeah, I can't click anything, can't do anything. Um, I don't know what the deal is. So I go to Word, I say let's save, I can't do that. If I press enter it'll work. Uh, press enter again to save the document. Okay, so now it's going to reboot. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, but I, I kind of wanted to show this because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that claim that Macs are the best and they never have problems. And that just isn't true in my opinion. Uh, this isn't the first type of problem I've had. I've had other problems with it. You know, it's not like it's a big deal. It's it's computers, you know. And like I tell my students, computers are kind of like cats. You kind of got to expect weird things to happen. So don't get too upset when you have a problem with a computer because things can happen. And that's just the nature of the beast. So, yeah, as long as they come up, what? No big deal. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that one boot up. I'm going to come back over to this system and I am going to plug in I've got a USB here and on this USB I have a library for iMovie that came from my MacBook Pro 2008 if you watched my video about the MacBook Pro 2008 recently um, then by now you know that I did a, it was approximately an eight minute video that I rendered, edited and rendered in iMovie on that particular system. And I'm going to compare the MacBook Pro 2008, the MacBook Pro uh, 2011, and the MacBook Pro 2015, all of which, well, no, these two are 13 inch and the MacBook Pro 2008 is a 15 inch and it is a dual core as well. Uh, let's see, I'm going to do go to folder here and I'm going to go to slash users. I always like to take my home folder and make a shortcut up here. Just makes it easier for me uh, so I can see everything. I'm used to being able to get access to directories and not necessarily do searches for stuff, you know, like you do when you're normally working with Macs. And I'm going to bring up... A new finder window so what I did was copied oh did I get the wrong one let me think Did I put it on this one yeah I did okay so here's my iMovie library um, and while I'm doing the copy I'll let you know how long it took and how much work it was so to copy this file using USB 2.0 um, Hold on, let me get it started, and then we'll talk How about that. So I'm going to go into Movies. There's my original iMovie library for this particular computer. I'm going to copy over the iMovie library from the MacBook Pro. And it's saying it's going to take about 15 minutes to do the copy. Now, on my MacBook Pro 2015, using USB 3.0, it only took it about 3 minutes to copy 26 gigabytes. So I was really happy with that. Um, this computer says it's going to take 13 minutes. And of course it's USB 2.0. And on my MacBook Pro 2008 to copy this iMovie library from the MacBook Pro 2008 down to the thumb drive right here. I actually took uh, two hours so there's some serious limitations um, with the older systems, and I did address that in my video, but 
yeah, there, there are some limitations definitely inherent. Um, now, if you ever want to do this, you can take your iMovie library and copy it to a thumb drive. Now, I just happened to rename mine because I didn't want to overwrite the original. Once this iMovie library is all done downloading, all I have to do is double click it and it'll load it into iMovie. And then I can go ahead and um, basically what I'm going to do is render the exact same file as it exists. On this particular computer, I already have the numbers for uh, the MacBook Pro 2015 and the 2008. So I'll put all those numbers up as soon as it gets downloaded. So I'm going to pause right now. No point in making everybody wait. And we'll be right back in about 11 minutes. All right, we're back. So uh, I am doing a capture uh, via my cell phone instead of doing a direct capture because I want to get the most accurate results that I can. But I have now copied the iMovie library from my MacBook Pro 2008. I'll just go ahead and double click it. And iMovie should open it up. There we go. So it basically is then the last state uh, that it was in when I last closed it. So I'm just going to go back and I'm actually kind of surprised it wants me to name this project. So I'm not sure what this one is, to be honest. So I'm just going to name it test. All right. And here is the project that I worked on and rendered on my previous MacBook, the Pro 2008. So what I'm going to do, I just have a really quick look, make sure everything's still the same. Yes, it is. So it's, it's an upside and a downside of iMovie that when you take a clip and you actually cut it into your um, project, it actually saves the files inside iMovie. So the downside of that is it's basically got a copy of every single source that you used to make your particular movie. Um, so it can get pretty large. And in this case, let's go back here. Uh, this iMovie from the MacBook Pro is actually coming in at uh, about 50 gigabytes. So before you move this, if you ever do decide to move your iMovie library between the systems, you're going to want to prune any projects that you can. Um, although there are problems with the newer upgrade, I do recommend upgrading to the newest version of iMovie because if I go back to projects and let's say I want to prune this library, so I decide to go to this particular one, uh, one that I don't care about, test. And I click this option and I delete the project. On certain versions of iMovie, it will delete the project thumb and the project itself, but it still keeps all of your media here. So on more current versions of iMovie, if you delete a project, it will delete the associated media. So you can prune down the size of this file quite a bit by deleting any projects that are older that you don't need anymore so that you can get this iMovie library down smaller. Now if you're going between USB 3.0 to another USB 3.0 system it's not a problem at all but if you're going between two systems uh, one is USB 2.0 and say it's older like the MacBook Pro was and it's going to be a problem. It's going to take it quite a while. Anyway, I'm going to change this to better quality. And got the correct estimated size. That's my whole movie. So I'm going to click Next. And we'll save it with the same name as the last one. The last time I rendered it. And I'll get an estimate. Time starting at 9.33. So let's see, it's saying about three minutes, which I don't know, it seems kind of hard to believe, but you never know. Maybe it can do it. I actually expected this one to be like mm, maybe six or seven minutes, because this is a seven minute, 55 second movie. 
at 1080p and it's relatively complicated so it could take it a little while Let's see if I can get less glare on the screen there we go so you can hear the fan speeding up uh, it's starting to get a little bit louder here so I'm gonna pause for a little bit and when it gets done we'll talk about the results all right, since I used the stopwatch for the MacBook Pro 11, I'm going to go ahead and run the render on the uh, MacBook Pro 2015 and see what kind of score we get. Uh, I had approximately three minutes, but I want to get something a little bit more accurate. So I'm going to hit save and the timer at the same time. And here we go. Oh, shoot. Of course it would have to ask me a question, wouldn't it? All right then, I guess we'll start that over. And I'm gonna wait till the top of the minute just in case my timer stopwatch doesn't work. Three, two, one, go. Okay, now it's actually going. All right, we're back. So the systems have finished rendering and very interesting result set. Um, so we got the MacBook Pro 2015 on the left. We got the MacBook Pro 2011, 13. They're both 13 inch on the right. Both are i5s. Now the system on the right here uh, has been upgraded. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM in it and it has a uh, 512 gigabyte SSD in it and here's the score results I actually was really impressed uh, we'll start with the MacBook Pro 2008 which has a core 2 duo 4 gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD completed the render of a 7 minute 55 second file in uh, excuse me 41 minutes now the MacBook Pro 2011, uh, like I said, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 512 gigabyte SSD, completed the same file render in 7 minutes, 12 seconds, almost minute for minute. And the MacBook Pro 2015 rendered that same exact file in 4 minutes, 32 seconds. So it's really interesting to see you know, when you look at the uh, 2011 here and then you fast forward four and a half, five years, um, you know, not a whole lot has changed. I'm not actually sure which processor. I know it's an i5, but I don't know uh, which one it is, is in here. It, this is an early 2011, I'm pretty sure. Let's see if we can get something really specific on the processor. Network, software. Well, I guess I'll have to find out. I'll have to look it up somewhere. Um, I was kind of hoping it would be here, but it actually, it only tells me Intel Core i5. It doesn't tell me which one or uh, which model. And I'm sure, sure some of you know out there, but uh, if you do, drop it in a comment and let me know. But uh, very interesting, you know, when you're talking about the sweet spot, um, people running out and getting the newest MacBook Pro, the 2016, which I'm sure is even better, you know, marginally. Uh, and then you look at what the 2011 is capable of doing, and it just kind of makes me chuckle, you know, because... I can live with a render time of 7 minutes 12 seconds versus 4 minutes 32 seconds for the newest MacBook Pro. Yes, it's faster. Yes, it's, you know, works uh, to me better and it's lighter. That's a big thing for me. Um, but again, it only has 8 gigabytes and it's got a 256 gigabyte SSD soldered in, so it's not like I can replace it. But I uh, thought that might be something interesting you might want to see, and, and I was planning on doing it anyway. Um, but it really is something to think about. You know, you don't really need the newest MacBook Pro to do 
um, basic editing or even more advanced editing as long as you have a little bit of patience and you're willing to wait a little while um, which a little while is relative so depending on how long your videos is might not be very long at all well thank you for watching and as always please share and subscribe and if you really like the video uh, give me a like if you could and drop me a line let me know what you think we'll see you soon